Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy HMSA 2012 here, back at it again. Uh, this time I'm going to show you my round four uh, of the Monotype July Tour that I'm currently participating in. Um, as of now, I am currently two and one. Uh, we were supposed to have originally nine rounds, but I believe four players have quit midway due to um, them being disinterested in this tour. As it's a nine, technically it's supposed to last for nine weeks. And, um, but we're just playing as many games as possibly can because apparently um, one player has already completed all their games. At this point in time, I need approximately three more games before this one. And I think I'm in second place in terms of points. So anyways, let's get to the match. I'm actually, let me do the switch sides. There you go. So as you can see, I changed up my team quite a bit because it's mono. I'm going to play against Mono Electric, and with Mono Electric, uh, Crocodile is like one of the best answers to um, Electric outside of Rotom because Rotom can just Hydro Pump here. I have uh, Scarf Hydreigon in order to deal with uh, the faster threats with like Electivire, um, Galvantula, and Thunderous. Mega Sableye um, <laughs> walls his entire team outside of Tapu Koko. Greninja is actually Focus Sash, and I have spikes in it to predict any Thunderbolts from slower Mons, and I can just set up spikes and Hazard Stack away against his team so I can just do chip damage, especially Tapu Koko, because Tapu Koko is in a very annoying mod this time. Uh, Crocodile is my, another Scarfer that I'm using. Uh, deals with the knockoff, just cripples the team easily. Now here I have a Tyranitar bit and Assault Vest with some investment in HP and Special Defense, so it can just take on Top of Coco 1v1. And then I also have uh, another Assault Vest user in Muck. So looking at his team, um, it looks like Thunderous is most likely going to be his Z user. Uh, Rotom is going to be his Defogger and a Status and Spreader. Galvantula is going to be the Web Setter, which is, Web is actually kind of problematic against my team. Um, Mega Manetric, obviously. And Electivire could be either Choice Banded or some Life Orb variant. I'm surprised he didn't bring Zerora. It's legal now, so anyways, let's get right to it. So lead match off, I know I don't want to get webs up against me, so I'm going to lead off with my Mega Sableye as I predict him going to Galvantula. I'm going to Mega Evolve. He goes for the Bug Buzz, which is fine with me. I don't take anything at all. I knock off Crit, get that Focus Dash out of here. I prevent the webs from getting up as he Volt Switches, and I'm just going to recover all the HP I just got. <laughs> So he goes into Mega Manetric, lower my attack with his ability. I go for the protect to see what he has. He goes for a Signal Beam. Now, Signal Beam is somewhat of an odd choice. Yeah, it hits all the dark types, but it doesn't really do much against my team, as half my team doesn't really care about a Signal Beam. So I'm just going to recover, just chip away at his HP with the burns. I'm going to go into my Alolan Muck for the opportunity to get in. He goes for the Overheat, which is absolutely nothing. This Muck is hard body, baby. So. I predict I'm going to switch out. I go for Pursuit and does over half, which is insane. Now this Electivire is kind of scary against my team, so I'm just going to predict him to go for Earthquake or a Fighting type move and go to Mega Sableye. He goes out to Mega Manetric. I just throw off a Wisp because I just feel like I want to burn that Electivire ASAP. Then I'm going to go for the Protect. He goes for the Overheat, which is completely fine with me. It isn't going to do too much to my Sableye. As you can see, it is only 35. And I believe I just recovered just to, just to get back all that HP. Yummy! So anyways, he goes into Thunderous. I go for the knockoff, and as you can see, he is the Z user. So I'm going to switch out and go to my Hydreigon. He goes for the Taunt, but I think he knows that I'm a Scarfer Hydreigon because he switched out to his Tapu Koko. And I just go for the Dark Pulse here, and that does 29%. Meaning this Tapu Koko is definitely either Specs or Scarf. And he goes for the Volt Switch, which is fine with me. That's absolutely nothing. He goes into Electivire. I'm going to predict him going for the Earthquake or a Fighting type move, going to Hydreigon. Then he goes into Mega Manetric just to sack this off and U-turn just to get the momentum in my favor. So I go into my Greninja, he goes to Coco, fine with me, uh, I'm going to switch out, go into my Muck. He goes for Grass Knob, which is very interesting, but I'm free to click a Poison Jab right now. And of course Poison Jab knocks off the Galvantula, which is fine with me. Now I go into Sableye. Predict the Electivire switch. He goes for Thunder Punch again, does a little too much. And then he goes for the Will O Wisp. Uh, what's going on with my music? Got a replay. 
So the Electivire is now burned. Crocodile is in. I'm ready just to knock something off. That does so much to the Thunderous, even though it's the Z user. The knockoff is just gonna knock this thing off. So in comes the top of Coco. That'll be fine. I'm gonna go into my T-Tar and beta specific specifically for this top of Coco. And I'm actually gonna click Crunch, predicting the Rotom. I will have I do have Earthquake, but I don't want this to take any damage. So, next thing you know, I'm gonna go into my Hydreigon because I can hit all, take all these hits, except for a Signal Beam, which confuses me. Now, I don't want Hydreigon to be taking too much damage because I need to save this for the Electivire. So I'm gonna go into my Sableye. I go for, he goes for the Toxic, and I bounce that thing right back off to the Rotom. So, looks like everything's going so far so good in my favor. I got Greninja here. I'm gonna start Hazard Stacking because I feel like I need to get these, um, Spikes up in order to pressure the top of Coco and Electivire. So I'm gonna go for the Scald, get my Podian on. Does absolutely nothing to the Rotom, which is fine with me. And <clears throat> I think I'm able to U-turn out of there and get rid of this Rotom. So now Earthquakes and Earth Powers are now free to go. And he goes into Coco. Uh, at this point, because he let off the Coco, this made me lead to believe that he's actually Scarf. He goes for the Thunderbolt. And that does nothing to knock out this type of Coco. And last but not least, this Electivire is coming in hot, but unfortunately, he's hot in terms of burn, and I knock him out. And that is the round one of the first match of round of round four. So on to the next one. Now we got our second match right here. And I just want to make sure the music is going on very well. There you go. So now we're off to the round, <coughs> to the, sorry, the second match. So same Mons, we have to, part of the rules is they have to bring the same Mons because I don't know about the, the sets to be switched, but I didn't really switch my sets at all. So uh, leading off with Amlola and Muck, predicting him to go into Electivire, I'm like deciding to go into my Crook and he goes for the Thunder Punch, a bit too obvious on his part. I get a free knockoff of whatever card comes in. And I just do that, whew, that does so much to the Galvantula. And you know what? I'm just gonna knock this Galvantula off so I don't have to worry about Sticky Web. He has a top of Coco. I got a couple answers to this with Muck and Titar. That definitely thing does absolutely nothing. He goes into Electivire. I'm just gonna Poison Jab since Poison Jab is pretty much free against his team. Uh, he goes into. Damn. He goes in. I go into Sableye, but he Thunder Punches my Sableye and just kills me. Uh, the Crocodile is able to knock off, and as I confirmed my suspicions, it was Choice Bandit. So he goes into Top of Coco, I switch on to Muck, I got a couple answers to this, that Wolf Switch does 24, doesn't really do much to me. <clears throat> now I stay in because I don't know what this Thunderous is, but apparently he's Fadium Z, but he's a special one. <laughs> so I go for the Poison Jab, that's over 51, he T-Bolts, I was thinking about going to Crook, but I didn't want to risk that. And I got Greninja here, now here's some God plays, I go for the Spikes, expect him to T-Bolt me, I'm like whoo! Then he taunts me, expecting me to hazard stack. I go for the skull. Woo, I got you on them crossovers, son. Anyways, he goes into Rotom. I'm gonna fire off the skull here. Attend it perfectly fine with me. This Rotom is gonna be kind of a menace against my team, but I'm gonna U-turn out of there because I don't want Greninja taking any damage. So I go into my Hydreigon because it can just wall this Rotom into Oblivion. And this Rotom has Toxic Protect, so. He's gonna stall out a bit of my HP. <clears throat> now, Hydreigon isn't really the winning factor against this team. It's gonna come down to uh, Titar and uh, Titar and Crocodile. Um, well, the reason why I switched out my Greninja is because it has Focus Sash and I want to maintain it in case from any last minute um, desperation. So this Crook knockoff just does a lot to this Rotom. And so now this Rotom cannot stall me out anymore. As he continues to protect so he can chip away at my HP. But another knockoff will definitely kill this Rotom. Now he goes into his top of Coco. Fine with me. I gotta I gotta go into my T-Tar safely. And T-Tar is gonna be the win con because it just walls the rest of the team. So I'm gonna go for the crunch as he stacks off the Thunderous, which is completely fine with me. Then last but not least, he goes into Mega Manetric. I'm gonna switch out because I don't want to get intimidated. And he just decides to fire off a hidden power, which is, I believe it's ice or, yeah, it has to be ice. So, 
I'm free to fire off for Earth Power. It doesn't do anything to the Mega Manetric. And he just knocks out my Hydreigon. Now he's being chipped away too much. Now I'm just going to throw my Crooked down, fire off an Earthquake, knock that Mega Manetric out. And last but not least, he has Tapu Koko. I'm just going to sack off my Crooked Owl. He goes for the Grass Knot, um, which obviously isn't going to do too much to my T-Tar. And that will be game because that Grass Knot, unless he crits me, which even a crit won't even kill me, will um, T-Tar will hard body, be able to knock that thing out and knock Tapu Koko off. So thank you guys for watching. Um, now I got my third consecutive win in this tournament, I believe. Yes, my third consecutive win in this tournament. So let's get that momentum going. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys uh, liked the video. Uh, like and subscribe for to show support. Thank you and good night.